Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So I tried recording this twice now, so this is the third time. The first time I wasn't even recording, and then the second time I didn't realize my headset wasn't plugged in to the computer. So third time's the charm. Um, if you like these kind of videos, don't forget to subscribe and, and hit that thumbs up and whatnot while you're down there. And uh, if you want to support the channel, I have this really cool Python shirt linked in the description below. Feel free to check it out. But today we're going to talk about some encryption. I did an encryption video a while back, and today is more of a primitive kind of encryption. It's called the Caesar Cipher. I actually learned about this recently. I, I read a book called um, Cryptography. It was, a, it was a high overview book, and uh, it talked about how Caesar Cipher was one of the first forms, if not the first form, of encryption, really. Um, so we have this practice problem. I found it on realpython.com to look for things to talk about for videos. And it says get ready for your next interview. So maybe it's an interview problem. I don't know. But a Caesar cipher is basically you have this string. So we have A, B, C, D, and then space X, Y, Z like they do now. And then the key, or what we're using to encrypt it, is a shift amount. So we're shifting each individual letter over uh, if you were to think of the alphabet as a list from index 0 to 25, A being at 0, Z being at 25, you would see it shift, shift over um, by the key amount, which in this example is 4. And then each letter gets shifted over by that key amount, and it encrypts it that way. And then if you're towards the end, so X, Y, Z, it goes back to the beginning. And you can see in this example as we code it, why that makes it a little bit more challenging to get back to the beginning. So there's a few things I want to talk about before we get into it. Um, first, I'm going to cd into the right directory. Oh, first it's desktop. Whoops. Desktop and then programming. Yeah. OK. So there's a few things I want to show you before we get started. So let me run Python down here. OK, so the first one is the character. In Python. So chr makes the character. And then if we want to create a character, uh, like a, for example, we have to pass in the ASCII value. We have to pass in the ASCII value for a. And the ASCII value for a is actually 97. So if we do chr and then pass in 97, we get a. And then the tricky thing might be, um, how do we get the ASCII value from a letter? You know, we're not supposed to memorize these, and I think it's it'd be stupid to memorize all of these. Is there a way to get the ASCII value by passing in a letter into something? And the answer is yes. There is a function called ORD. I'm not sure if that's short for anything. Uh, but let me pass in A right here, as you can see. We'll hit enter, and we get 97 back. And if I press B instead of A, we get 98, and so on and so forth. So if we did chr, ORD, all right, and then t, what would this do? Well, the, the inner part would give us the ASCII value for t, and then that would create the letter for t. So essentially, we're just getting t back, all right? Makes sense. And another part of this problem is uh, they want the returned encrypted string with all the letters transformed and none of the punctuation and white space touched. Right, and that makes sense. So how are we going to do that? Um, so we're actually going to use a method called isAlpha. So let's say I have a string, and it's asdf.isAlpha, and that'll return a Boolean. And it's true if there are no um, you know, white space or, or numbers or punctuation, anything that isn't a letter. So if we had the comma right here at the end, you would see it bring back false because one of the characters is something other than a letter. Okay, so we're, ah, whoa, what just happened? I think I went to the wrong thing. There we go. So we're going to go ahead and do this problem. So I'm just going to uh, copy what they have in the example. So let me copy this. And let's make a string called s to hold this. And then we'll create our function, because that's what the question is wanting us to do. It's wanting to create a function to do this. So I'm going to call it Caesar. And then we will pass in string s and a shift amount, 
will be my parameters. And for the sake of things, I'm just going to start off with a, an empty list, I think is how I want to do this. So let's call this str list. And let's just make this an empty list. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through each character of the string and then shift it and then append it to the string list. And then at the end, I will join that string list back into a string and return that. Hopefully that makes sense. So let's go ahead and go through each character for x and s. We're going to go through each character and our string. And the first thing we need to ask is is, not x, or s, we need x dot is alpha. Right? So we need to ask ourselves, so it should be if x dot is alpha. We need to ask ourselves, is this a letter? And if not, else, we're just going to append it. So strellis.append, we're just going to append x. We're not going to encrypt it in any way. But if it is a letter, then we will do our encrypting algorithm. And this is where it gets a little bit tricky. And you have to kind of think about this a little bit. So let's do strellis.append. OK. Um, and actually, before this, just to make it simpler, I'm going to make this variable called encrypted to equal our encrypted letter. Because I would put it all in one line. I would put it inside of this. But it, I think it might be easier to understand if I make it its own um, individual variable. So let's go ahead and think about how we're going to do this. So the lowest number on the list, like I mentioned, 0 to 25 is how we can think of the alphabet in terms of a list and their indices. Indices. A has the ASCII value of 97. So really what I want to do is I want to temporarily drop A from 97 to 0, and then Z from whatever 97 plus 26 is um, to 26, or, or 25, I guess. So the way to do that is to actually, um, we are going to create the character. And then inside of that, I'm going to put two sets of parentheses. And at the very um, middle of these two sets, I am going to get the ASCII value of whatever x is. So for instance, if it was a, it would be 97. And then we're just going to subtract 97 so it goes to 0. And you'll see here why in a second. And then we're just going to add the shift amount. right? So if shift is 2 and we want to make it C, um, we'll just add it right here. And then the reason I'm subtracting 97 and getting it from 0 to 25 as the possibilities um, is we want to do modulus 26 at the end. And the reason we do the modulus 26 is we want to keep it in that range. And if it's at Z and it has to continue to shift, we want to make sure it goes back to A. Because if it goes to 26 or 27, and then at the end we add our 97 back to get the ASCII value, it's going to return something other than a letter. So we want to make sure it stays in that range. Okay, And I think this is all we need. So let's go through an example. Let's say X is A, like we've been talking about. So this would be 97 minus 97, so now it's 0. And let's say our shift amount's 3, so now it's 3. Uh, modulus 26, it's going to continue to stay 3 because it's not more than that. right? And then plus 97 to get us back to 100. And then that would be what? D? Shift it over 3? Yeah. So that should make sense. And hopefully it works. And let's just go ahead and append encrypted. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to return nothing.join and then we're joining the straw list. Okay. I think this will work. Um, let's go ahead and find out. So I want to go ahead and encrypt our example. So let's go print Caesar, and then the first parameter is the string that we're wanting to encrypt, so s. And then I think they encrypted it for and the example on this page. Yeah. 
So let's go ahead and run this and see if this is even correct. So Python, YouTube, Pi. We get E, F, G, H, B, C, D. And I believe from memory that is, yep, that is the same as this. Okay. So now we have this encrypted value. And actually, let's just copy this and put it in here. So now we have this encrypted value. How do we change it back to what it originally was? Because let's say it's a secret message and we encrypt it. Well, how's the person that's going to receive this turn it back to what they to what it once was, knowing the key? So they know it was shifted four. Um, but if we do this, if we just run it again, it's just going to go farther down and encrypt it again. And we have to do the opposite. We have to do minus four. So now we have the encrypted string. We're shifting it minus four because it was encrypted, shifting four. And now we'll go ahead and run this again. And voila, we are back to where we started. So yeah, this is a very primitive form of encryption. I wouldn't recommend doing this on your, your web app if you're <laughs> wanting to keep things secure and stuff in your database, maybe. Um, you can try it. You know, it might be worth a shot. Maybe it's one of those things that's so simple no one will think that you did that. And there you go. So anyway, um, that is the basics of how to do the Caesar cipher in Python. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, and uh, I will see you in the next one.